Hey there, my name Mater. You know, like Tub Mater, Fight the Tub. This is my best friend, Lightning McQueen. <laughs> that is the first time I've done that on a podcast. So there you go. <laughs> We're knocking it out of the park. This is American Real, where we aim to inspire, empower, and enlighten you through the stories of our guests. Here's your host, Roger Brooks. If you think about it in detail, it's so simple, helping one person a day. It's not easy, it's simple, but it's profound. It's the power of video, right? You can feel people through video. The only thing missing is you can't touch the person, you can't smell the person, because we don't have smell emission yet, right? <laughs> Um, but, but there's power in that. And you are able to build these incredible relationships with people through video, just from showing up and being you and, and sharing your stories. And so I, I aspire to inspire. What if you had a dream or desire to write your first book? You could finally share your story or express your views about a topic or subject you are passionate about. And what if 2020 became the year your dream became a reality? Turn a new chapter in your life, literally. Join me for a live webinar where I'll share my 10-step program for writing a best-selling book. Register now. Seats are limited. Don't miss it. I believe in you. Your best-selling book is waiting to be written. Don't let another week slip by. This is American Real. I am Roger Brooks. My guest today is Brian Schulman. You are the founder and CEO of Voice Your Vibe. In addition, you're a Forbes featured entrepreneur, a LinkedIn top video creator, and in 2018, you were listed as a LinkedIn top voice. We're going to talk today about how LinkedIn literally changed your life. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Roger. It's awesome to be here with you. Man, so there's not too many people that I know or have had the privilege to talk to where they could say LinkedIn has literally changed your life. How, what do, at a high level, because we'll talk a lot about different parts of that today, but what does that mean? Yeah, well, I've been on LinkedIn every day for the last 16 years. And so back then it was just a digital resume and a place to look for a job. There was no way to engage. There was no way to create. It was just, okay, you could search. You had a, a profile and, uh, and again, you could look for a job. Um, and being on the platform as long as I have, I've been through the entire evolution, right? So I've, I've been a part of the morphing of it turning into an engagement platform where it truly is about that social interaction, right? And for those people that uh, are not too active on LinkedIn and they still haven't really embraced it as a platform, what would be some, you know, what would be your advice on how can, how they could get started? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the thing to remember, right, is that we, we all need to be seen and heard, especially in the business world. And with 675 million business professionals on the platform, about 250 million that are quote unquote active, and 1% that's creating content, there is literally no better time than now to show up and start being present. And even though the platform is uh, plus 17 years old, it's still so early, right? It's still so new and fresh. So I think the important part, and, and when I say show up, right, showing up comes in different ways. It means you can show up and support others and engage in the comments, right? That's a form of showing up. Then there's creating content in different ways, whether it be something like video or short form content or long form like articles and such. So I think the key is just taking the leap, right? You don't have to have it all figured out right out of the gates, but you have to start. And starting, I think, is always the hardest with anything. Um, so yeah, I mean, my, my biggest recommendation is just start. Just start by showing up and engaging with people and, and supporting others, uh, and, and the rest will start to happen. Okay, great. So thank you for that. We'll talk a little bit more about LinkedIn in a little bit, but let's jump uh, to your backstory. I know a little bit about it because we spoke before, but I, I'd love to really dig a little bit deeper into who you are as a person. What was it like growing up in SoCal? And um, give us an idea of who young Brian was. Sure. Um, so I'm going to do this a little bit differently uh, in terms of how I'm going to answer this question. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little tiny story and then I'm going to share something with you. So my daughter, who is going to be 20 this year, first year in college, uh, actually just made the dean's list her first semester. I'm super proud of her. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, her senior year in high school, she came to me with, in my office and um, handed me a couple pieces of paper. And, and I didn't know what it was. I was in the middle of doing some work. And so I stopped and, and I, I looked at the top of the paper and it said four way speech contest essay. And it had her name on it like they do in school. And it was entitled live to inspire. Now, again, I, I didn't have any idea what this was. So she, she stayed cause she wanted me to read it. So I'm going to read this to you. And this is through my daughter's voice um, that I think will answer that question. Well, and I'll, I'll round it out with a, a couple additional thoughts. Wow. Okay. Okay, so it's, again, it's, and I'm going to try to get through this without breaking down. I've yet to do that, so just bear with me. Uh, so it's entitled Live to Inspire. The story about to be told is about an extraordinary man, now 42 years young, who accepted all the obstacles life had to throw at him. Now, I know you may be thinking that everyone has different obstacles they just overcome throughout their lifetime, so how is he different from you and I? Well, what makes this particular man different from you and I is the tactics he used when faced with these obstacles. What makes him different from you and I is that he took these obstacles and used them to help make a difference and inspire others to never let life get in the way of their greatness and achievements. What makes us different from everyone else is not the obstacles life throws at us, but what we do when faced with these obstacles. Will you choose to accept defeat or will you choose to persevere? On May 13th, 1975, a child was born at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. And this child was born three months early, weighing a pound and a half. And because of this, was a premature baby. And during the early 80s, he was diagnosed with a neurological disorder called Tourette syndrome, which is a type of tick involuntary repetitive movements and vocalization disorder. And one day at camp, the counselor had to take this young boy to a payphone, tears streaming down his face to call his mother because his neck kept constantly snapping to one side over and over and over again. He went to various doctors who performed countless medical examinations to try and find a cure for his disorder. Every doctor said the same thing. He's fine. He'll grow out of it. And one day in fifth grade, he stood up in front of his entire class and shared with them what Tourette syndrome was and what living with Tourette syndrome was like. A huge weight was lifted off his shoulders once he shared his story with his classmates, and it generated many supporters, whether they be friends, parents, or teachers. Finally, a specialist at UCLA told him he would never be able to get rid of this disorder alone, 
and suggested that he take a special drug called clonidine to help with the tics. Unfortunately, with this drug came horrible side effects. He made a conscious decision to not take the pills after a few years and try and master his condition through focus and determination. After a while, the tics started to diminish, and for the most part, they went away. No one knows what life has in store for them. All we can do is live until we're forced to face an obstacle in which we must make a choice to either overcome or accept defeat. The rotary four-way test demonstrates how one person can make a difference in the lives of others. With the experience this boy had to face came a life lesson. With determination, perseverance, and support from others, anything can happen. Now at 42 years young, this man chooses to use his story to make a difference in others' lives by inspiring people in times of uncertainty. He implements the Rotary's motto, service before self, by finding the light in those who cannot find it in themselves, supporting them through their tough obstacles. He helps lift people's spirits and hopes in times of hopelessness and despair. He helps people turn their ideas and dreams into realities. He helps build people from the ground up in hopes that they too will one day share their stories with others. He makes a difference in this world each and every day, which inspires others to make a difference as well. Who may you ask is this man? Well, he is my father. Out of all the lives, out of all the lives he's made the biggest difference in, I believe he's made the biggest difference in mine. He inspires me never to give up on what I believe in, to always do what makes me happy. But most importantly, to always live every day as if it were the last, because we're never guaranteed a tomorrow. As Gandhi once said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Making a difference in the lives of others is my dad's change. What will be yours? Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that with us. I'm honored that that's the first time you've done that and that we've had the privilege to be the, the stage for that. I cannot wait to share that with our audience and your audience. It's, it's emotional. I'm, I have tears in my eyes. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. She's gifted and you're gifted and um, I'm speechless. Yeah. It's uh, like I said, it's, it's tough to g not get through that uh, without breaking down. I, it, I never knew that that's how she felt. And look, now we have a, an amazing sense of, of where you came from, who you are, and what you're all about through that wonderful essay. Um, so thank you for that, Brian. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay, so let's move into why <laughs> you are so positive. I mean, I look at your LinkedIn, and it's one after the other after the other and videos and and people are engaging and the world needs this kind of thing. Uh, where does it come? Yeah. You know, and, and I get that question a lot, you know, why are you so positive? How are you so positive all the time? And, and it, it comes, you know, it's, it's, it's from where I come from. Right. And you heard a lot of it through my, my daughter's words, right. Literally fighting for every breath to make it into this world as a miracle baby. That was a pound and a half that wasn't supposed to live. And I, I literally had no voice coming into the world. And, and then being diagnosed with a neurological disorder and being the weird kid. I was already the small kid, but then I was the weird kid. Uh, dealt with a lot of adversity and bullying growing up. And I, I wanted to give out the opposite of the negative that, that I had received by others around me. Now, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of, a ton of positivity around me, right? But sometimes one negative can overshadow a thousand positives. And I, I wanted to be a giver of, of good and positivity and light and love and strength and encouragement. And, and I know that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And that every breath I literally do take is a 
gift and that I've certainly failed way more in life and in business than I've succeeded. Um, you know, but I've, I've learned from every step and I kept and have, I have kept and keep getting up and dusting myself off every time and, uh, and, and keep going and knowing that that's why I've succeeded no matter the outcome. And I know that, when I found LinkedIn 16 years ago, you know, that my purpose was to give out good to the universe, no matter what I was going through, right? Because we all have bad days, right? And, and I wanted to give out good 365 with the hopes to achieve my why. And my why is to inspire one person a day. So if, if I can inspire one person to chase after their dreams and know and feel and believe that they can accomplish anything or get up one more time after you've fallen 50,000 times and know and believe that, that you can keep going. And that even, and every time you get up and keep going, that that is succeeding, whether you're reaching that far off goal that you can barely see in the distance, right. Or inspire someone to inspire someone else or put a smile on somebody's face when they don't have one. Cause we all have that or make somebody feel good about themselves when they don't, because again, we all go through that. If I could just do one of those things for one person a day, I have done my part um, as a human being on this planet to make the world a better place. And, you know, look, life will continue to throw me mad curveballs. I'll continue to keep swinging and, again, getting up to the plate. And, uh, you know, and as, as my mom had said to me, who was my genuine hero and, and rock, um, you know, she showed me this picture of me on her lap as a baby in a lion's costume, the very first costume I'd ever had, I think for Halloween or something. And, and she made it. I said, why did you put me in a lion's costume as my, as my first costume? And she said, because you're a fighter. <laughs> like, I, I didn't know this. And, and, and she said, you know, you, you fought for every breath to make it into this world. So, you know, my hopes are that everyone will get up and fight and everyone will, keep getting up and, and believe in themselves and know that, that they have a voice and that they matter and that they have a story and that they matter and that they're not alone. And especially in the world of LinkedIn, right, where we are all here to support one another and that we're in it together and better together and stronger together. So um, that's a long answer to a short question, but that's the answer. No, and what I love about it, it it's if you think, about it in detail. It's so simple, helping one person a day. It's not easy, it's simple, but it's profound. Because I've experienced that from you. We had a, a, a call, an initial call, and just having that call with you inspired me to want to elevate my game. You know, and I, we, I shared that with you before we started. It's true, like I'm not making that up. You just through the conversation. So I could see how you do that and do it very naturally and how it becomes infectious, you know, for this community of LinkedIn to want to, you know, be part of your world. And, and I'm happy to be part of that world. And I, I can't wait to extend this to our listeners so they could be part of that world. And as I said, it's, it's simple, but profound, and, and it works. And, and, I, and I know that that's the case because you've been doing this for so long and your your community is growing so large that it it it, it it it's you can't lie i mean it doesn't that does not it cannot be disputed and i cannot wait to see where this goes and i think i told you this the other day 5 years 10 years from now it's just it's going to be amazing yeah it truly is and it truly will and and you know it LinkedIn video, it truly changed everything when it launched. Um, and I may be getting ahead of myself, but uh, it, it kind of runs together. You know, I, I think, I, you know, when I shared my story and, and my daughter's voice and such, right? I mean, that's not stuff that I ever talked about. It wasn't anything that I wanted to talk about. I, again, I looked at myself as being weird and different. And I didn't think about that as a good thing. It was more of that. I'm standing out in a way I don't want to stand out. You know, it was hard enough to find that voice of mine and to find my people. And, you know, cause again, I, I didn't know who was truly a friend or not because I was made fun of a lot. And, um, you know, it, it, I just wanted to blend in. Right. And what I realized 
when video launched in, on LinkedIn in 2017 in beta, um, and I had access to it when it launched in alpha of June of 2017. And I remember seeing it pop up on my phone and I'm like, there is absolutely no way that I'm getting on video because all I kept thinking was what if my Tourette's come out? Because the thing is, is nobody in the world of business ever knew that they didn't know the miracle baby story. And they certainly didn't know anything about the Tourette's. Um, it was only, there was only one time that I ever talked about the story and it was in the really early days of my career when I didn't really have much legs to stand on and have much experience and anything to really tout. So I figured, okay, well, I'll, I'll tell my story. It's a story of grit and tenacity and I, I, I can get knocked down, but I'll keep going and I can learn and grow and, and you know, send a lot of down, give me a shot, right? Because everybody gets a shot from somebody. And, um, and it was, it was crazy. I met with eight different hiring managers, a bunch of different people in between, in between from the teams. And, and it would always be the same question at the end of that interview. Well, that's a great story, but why should we hire you? And so after all that, right, I walk out of this big growing company in the dot boom days of the startup world and with my head down on my tail between my legs, so to speak. And I didn't get the job. And I said to myself, I'm never going to talk about that again because of the things that I had mentioned, right? But when video launched, it, it, broke the, it broke the LinkedIn mold that we all knew existing, like the, the business speak we were conforming to in the box and the suit, if you will, that we were wearing when we showed up. You didn't see us because it was all text-based, right? Uh, but a much younger generation, and I say that because a lot of these incredible human beings could be my kids, like in age. And they were talking about fears and failures. This Let's Get Honest campaign uh, that had launched at the same time LinkedIn Video did. And, and such personal parts of their life. And that was kind of the notion of this campaign was let's get honest, right? People were talking about speech impediments, agoraphobia, rape. I mean, really personal stories of their life. And it was, it was gut-wrenching, right? You fell to them and you... You wanted to reach through the, the, the lens and give them a hug, right? It was incredible and it was very empowering. More importantly, it was truly inspiring. I was inspired in the moment when it happened. I'm like, wow, I'm actually inspired to want to share my story. Because to me, it was just life. I never looked at it as this, why would I put that in the forefront, right? But it took me five months to muster up the courage and bravery to take the leap and finally do it. Like I was just terrified and I had never done anything like that. I had never put a phone in my face. It was always my kids on the other side of the camera. Right. Um, so when I tell people that I had literally have had to go through anything and everything you would think of that you'd go through or that you will go through, I've been through it all. I had to get comfortable being uncomfortable and, in so many ways, emotionally, technologically, psychologically, uh, all of them, right? So when I say I've spent thousands and thousands of hours learning this stuff, I, I had to figure it all out, right? But what I realized was wanting to blend in, I realized I just needed to be me. And it was hard for me to understand that, right? You'd think, well, why wouldn't you just be you, right? But when you're doing something that's so uncomfortable, lots of things are going through your head, right? And I realized by being me, just as I had 14 years on the platform, that I was, by being me, I was inspiring others, right? But when I did that video, I was inspiring others by sharing my story. And it was the very first time in my life that I ever thought of weird and different in a good way, right? Uh, and not disabled, but differently able. And that I had a voice and that I had a story. And it, it was a moment that did, uh, amongst many, right, that changed my life on LinkedIn because I found this confidence in myself and my own voice that I didn't know I had that was helping people. It, they didn't have to go through what I went through, right? It, it was that relatability. It was that you could, it's the power of video, right? You can feel people through video. The only thing missing is you can't touch the person. You can't smell a person because we don't have smell vision yet. Right. <laughs> um, but, but there's power in that. And you are able to build these incredible relationships with people through video, just from showing up and being you and, and sharing your stories. And 
So I, I aspire to inspire, right? And, and for people to find their voice, you know, and to share their story and, and remember that it's the, the heart inside of you that, that people fall in love with, you know? And if you bring your heart in every story that you tell and you tell stories, because it is the stories we fall in love with. And it's, it doesn't matter whether you're, a, you know, an individual person, part of a team, brand, a company. Um, it, it's the stories that attract and vibe your tribe and that that's where the loyalty comes from, right? We have brands we love and it's because of the way it makes us feel, you know? Yeah, it fits a need, but it's that feeling that it gives us. So. Wow. Brian, and, and you know, it's, uh, the irony in all this is that by you sharing your story that you were once afraid to share, you were able to come out of your shell. You were able to inspire. And then you said, that's, that's, when, that's when it changed. And what, what I love about this is because it's very, very similar to our platform here. You know, our tag, we talked about this before offline. Our tagline is everyone has a story. Our whole premise for American Real is to inspire empower and enlighten those through the stories of others so your story is about the story of sharing your story (laughs) you know it's like a seinfeld but at the at the same time the more people that can learn this because i'm i'm with you i i've always had that mask in my whole corporate life that i felt i had to hide behind yeah as soon as i started the podcast that's when i came out of you know my shell and took that mask off and said look love me or hate me this is who i am but darn it i'm going to share the stories of others because that's what i want to do and i just i love the fact that you're doing it in your way i'm doing it my way and many 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 others on linkedin and elsewhere are doing it in their way but the, the the end game is that we're all trying to inspire those people to do the same yeah, and it's a gift, right? It's it's an incredible, and I love what you do and the way that you do that, right? We do the same thing in different ways, and that's the beauty about it, you know, is that, yes, everyone does have a voice in a story that matters and a voice in a story that can positively affect, impact, and inspire another human being's life. And that's an incredible gift we are each given as a human being, not only to give, but to receive, Right. So it's, it's extremely, extremely powerful. And in whatever way you do that, right, it doesn't have to be video. But I will say, right, I mean, 80%, 85% of content consumed online is through video. And videos do help build brand awareness, whether it's an individual or a company brand, right? And remembering that each individual within that company and that brand is an ambassador on behalf of that brand. They have their voice and their vibe and their tribe. And and will reach so many more people than if it's just the company voice, because that company voice, we don't think of a human being, right? We think of, oh, it's, it's, it's this company. Um, So that you don't have that, that heart to heart association, so to speak. Right. Um, But 90% of people use video to actually make decisions when it comes to buying a product or a service and, and videos in general, like when you think about social um, social videos generated about 12 X the shares of text and image combined. So I, I, my focus is video, right. And specifically with founders and C-suite execs who want to find that voice and who want to show up and they don't have any idea how, and you know, and they're scared. And I mean, again, I went through all of it, you know, I'm sure you went through it too when you got started. And then once you did, you took that leap and you're like, wow, this is, this is, scary and uncomfortable but it's empowering and and it's inspiring and um you know helping folks just like you do tell a story that people will fall in love with you know for me it's on linkedin through video and it doesn't matter what platform it is obviously i'm like all branded linkedin because again it's it's because of the way it makes me feel right it's a great example of the way brand makes you feel and for me it's the brand and the people right Let me ask you, would you have worn that 10 years ago? Yeah, I would have like, cause that it had that impact and effect on me, but I will say like since video so much, uh, another echelon, like twice up, right? Because of, because again, it, it allows these relationships to be built so much further. I mean, I, 
family. Like it's weird. You never think you hear a word like family, love, support, and charisma on a business social networking platform. And yet it's what we've created together. You see this word LinkedIn fam all over LinkedIn, you know, and another creator and I, we can't figure out which one of it was that created it, but it's not really the point, right? It's how, how it makes us feel. Um, and I remember there was a newscaster who had showed up on one of his, a video series I'd been doing for 95 weeks on LinkedIn um, called Shout Out Saturday. And she showed up in the comments. She had just come on the platform and she's an Emmy award winning newscaster. And she, she said, I've never seen so much love and so much encouragement and just support of one another on any social platform. Like this is amazing. And we need to keep this going. And she's so right. You know, we're, we're literally all going to look back years from now and go, look at what we did together. You know, these incredible companies like LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, right? They all are the playground, right? They build the playground. And then we have the ability to show up. And I always say with LinkedIn, it's like we're all in kindergarten again, you know, because in kindergarten, it like you and I are on the playground and you're on the slide and I'm on the dirt or something and another friend's on the swings. And, and, and it doesn't matter what you look like, what color you are, what creed you are, what background, what religion, like, in in kindergarten we're all just kids on the playground and there's no judgment and and it's just like hey roger you want to go play in those three wheelers over there and, and you're like yeah let's go do it and, and i may not even know your name and it's like hey you want a kid you want to go play right and then you look at the gal on the swings and you're like hey you want to come with us and we're all like, yeah let's go do it and all of a sudden we're just best friends because in kindergarten that's the way it happens right and that is what's happened or especially over the last couple of years on LinkedIn because of video, you build these amazing relationships, right? And, and you may get together and collaborate on videos or co-found companies. I mean, it's happened to me. Uh, you know, you, you reach people in ways that you just never thought would be possible. I went and did two keynotes in Australia last year that was sponsored by a brand that got me there. And it was me sharing all the stuff that we're talking about, right? The journey and, and my backstory and the why behind it all. And, and, and it all happened because of getting on video. You know, I became a forward speech and entrepreneur through this journey. Never thought that would happen. You know, um, I mean, all of these things, be one of the world's top video marketing experts. I, I never thought I'd get on video, you know? So I think it just goes to show with anything it all looks hard in the beginning and you might not even know where it goes. And I kind of equated it to my building and growing startups for 20 years. Um, and I think that's where initially it made sense for me where I said, okay, I just got to do this because I stopped myself many times over five months. Oh, I got to do it. No, I can't. Oh, I could. No, I can't. And, and I didn't want to look back and go, what if I didn't want to say to myself, Oh, gosh, I wish I had done that. Why did I? Why didn't I? Yeah, I waited five months. But, you know, it's, it's all about the journey, right? And it wasn't where is this going to go? Because I'd have that conversation with a lot of creators too. That, where are we doing? Where are we? Where is this going? You know, and I said, I think you're asking the wrong question. Just enjoy the journey. We don't need to know where it's going to go. All we know is we're a part of that. And we will look back no matter how long the journey is and go, wow, look at what we did together. Like we, we, we've brought people together, you know? So yeah, it's, it's amazing. Incredible. And I love the kindergarten analogy because it is, it's so true. We are on a yeah. playground and, and everyone's embracing each other. It doesn't matter where you're from, what your culture or background or color created. That, that's what I love about this platform. And, and it really went from one extreme to the other, you know, yeah. so like, prim and proper and, and after video, as you said. And I, I never really thought about it, Brian, that way that it is, it's video that really, that's when everything changed. Well, it did because it, it, for the very first time, Roger, it became human with a heartbeat. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a really good way, right? Because again, before it was that very corporate, very business speak in, in all its form and fashion, right? And and when video launched and when the Let's Get Honest campaign launched and you had people like Monty Goswami, Swish, uh, and Authentic Alex in London and Michaela Alexis and others who were sharing from their heart 
you felt that you really felt it and it had never happened before on the platform and it reached us and it inspired us and it inspired more of us. Right. And that's why I was saying earlier where it, it's, it's the heart of it all that matters. Right. I mean, I do have a degree in psychology and I'm not going to get all psycho babble on you, but I think the thing to remember is that if you think about the business world, right. Cause LinkedIn is a business social networking platform. You wouldn't just walk up. I wouldn't walk up to you in a room with a contract in my hand and go sign this contract. You'd say, I'm sorry. I'm Roger. It's nice to meet you. What, what's your name? Right. You wouldn't do that digitally. Although that happens all the time in different ways. Right. Um, you wouldn't just show, you shouldn't just show up on video and just start talking about business when nobody knows who you are because people have to fall in love with you before they're going to listen to what you have to say. And, and, and we, we do business with people we like, know, and trust. And our best friends are our best friends because we have so many things in common. Right. And I think that's that, that's that one big component that I think so many people and brands and companies and, and teams aren't quite, they're just still not getting it yet when it comes to video and the ones that do, they're crushing it. They get it and they understand that they understand the power of each individual voice of that brand. Right. Cause they're their biggest heroes. Their biggest cheerleaders are within those brands. Um, but it's about being human first and business is 10% of the mix, you know, and, and look at that, right? I mean, our very first conversation, we had so much that we related in terms of one another and we, we connected like hard and fast and that's the power too of video. I mean, I get on video chats with people every single day and they're like, that I hadn't met yet. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've known you for years, right? Sure, because and, you're watching them on, on video and you feel like, just like, when we watch TV, you feel like you know that celebrity or that newscaster um, because you're, you're with them so much. Yeah, and, and you have that, you relate, right? Like where there's a moment that happens and you're like, it just hits you. I remember a, a fellow creator friend of mine and he's been off for a little bit, but um, Aaron Hennig is, is a dear, dear friend. He's in Texas and he got on video and was in his car because he did many from his car and he had sunglasses on and he started out by saying, I'm wearing sunglasses today because I just, I don't know how I'm going to get through this without, you know, kind of losing it. And he was talking about one of his parents and cancer and going through all that. And it just, it was so unexpected for me to see and hear. And it really hit me hard. And I, I lost it. Like I just, I started bawling and, and I called him and I'm like, I just watched your video and I just had to tell you like you, it really hit me and I wasn't expecting it. Um, and, and again, the power in, and, and so many people showed up and were talking and engaging in the comments, you know, and talking about those experiences. And again, it was relatable, right? It was, it was painful for him, but it was important to him to talk about it. He was inspired to want to share that because he knew that there were others that have gone, are going, could go through that. And, and it was really impactful, you know? And again, it was, it came right from his heart. And I, again, I think that's the most important part of all of it is just, we're not inspired all the time. It doesn't happen every day, you know? But when it happens, go with that, you know, because, and, and, be vulnerable. It's okay. You know, and, I, and, I, and it, you hear these words, right? And you're like, really here? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's different. It's not with the place that you thought it used to be. And that's a good thing because now it's people really connect on a much deeper level. And you took the words right out of my mouth because my next question was, right. <laughs> um, is it okay to be vulnerable? And, and you just answered that question. Yes, it is okay doesn't happen all the time though and but uh, I, I had the privilege to inter interview Evan Carmichael and he said the very same thing you did when those moments occur record them because they they don't happen all the time make sure that yeah. you them and, and publish them because that's when people really can connect when when you're your true true and authentic self so yeah before I forget I, I would love in, in case folks are listening to this that have a family member or someone that is going through uh, Tourette's, 
Um, any words of advice? What, what might they be able to do that, that you've done to overcome this? Yeah, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, and I have, I'm going to weave this in. I have one of my very dear friends, my, my brother from another mother, Jake Melton, I met on LinkedIn. And I was introduced to him via a friend. And Jake has Tourette's. In all the years I've been on LinkedIn, this was the first time. And I've actually met four different friends on LinkedIn that have Tourette's. And it's incredible. And, and he has shared his stories. He's actually gotten on camera and literally just put the phone on the desk and was twitching. And he didn't say anything. He had some text on the screen. And the amount of people that showed up talking about that. And I was engaging in the comments too. Um, I met a mother and her son. Well, I met the mother, but I then met, took it offline through Zoom and we met on Zoom. Um, and she was talking about my, my nine or 11 year old son has Tourette's. And I said, I said, I'm here. I would love to talk. My mom would love to talk if you want to talk to her. And so she and I got on a video uh, on a Zoom chat and her mom, uh, her mom, her son was a little nervous uh, and didn't want to. And so she and I started talking and, and then she felt compelled to call him. And so he came downstairs and sat down on the couch next to her. And I could tell he was a little, you know, uncomfortable uh, as I would have been too. And we just were talking and kind of talking about this stuff too. And I shared some of those things that I did that helped me. Um, I did take medication for a number of years and then I decided I don't want to take that anymore. Um, and so there were three things that kind of work. I find to be common threads with people that have Tourette's as helpful. Um, one is music. Uh, I've been a musician my entire life and uh, my grandfather was a jazz musician and my son is a jazz musician. Um, he plays the horns and he got that from my grandfather not from me, but uh, it, and I'd remember sitting in the dark for hours as a kid playing the piano. Um, and I can pretty much play any instrument with the exception of the winds. I play all by ear by feel. Um, but it would, I would feel like I was in a different body literally. And I think it's, it's that, that focus and concentration. You are captured by something, right? So I think the key is more find something that captures you, right? It, you, that engulfs you for the good. Uh, and you're not in your head. Now, remember, yes, Tourette's is uncontrollable and usually you don't, you're doing them. But there's something about that focus uh, that, that really helps. So for me, music was one of those, yeah. Ask who's the artist that won the awards very recently? Uh, it's been in the news. She has Tourette's. She's 18 or, or something very young. Do you know about her? I don't know about her, so I'm gonna have to find out. I remember there was a guy that was on uh, America's Got Talent that was a comedian. Yeah, that no, had Tourette's, but just won all the major music awards. Um, you know, three weeks ago. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I just can't spit her name. She has Tourette's. Yes, and my daughter was telling telling us. And uh, her brother plays the piano, so they're a duo, and, and she's incredible, and, and she's talking about it. So that's you know, fantastic. Out there, and so that's why I'm, I was really curious wow. when you play music. That now, uh, thank you for sharing that with me. That's that's amazing. Um, yeah. So music is a it was always a big one for me. Um, comedy was another one. You know, I think because I was, again, I always felt like I was the weird kid and I was the small kid too. Um, I might as well be the funny kid. I mean, if I'm going to get made fun of, I might as well do it on my terms or at least try. So I got, I, I, I loved physical comedians. And when I look back at it years later, it all makes sense to me why, you know, because my Tourette's and by the way, just for clarity, right. In the height of my Tourette's growing up, um, I was somersaulting from room to room, jumping up and down, uh, lots of auditory noises, the intense neck twitch, as I mentioned, wrist flicking, uh, uh, and some other things. And, and some of them would commingle. Um, and so the comedy thing, physical comedians like Robin Williams, Jim Carrey when he was young, uh, they Sam, were. Sam, Sam Kinison, you know, uh, Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, like, I mean, the list goes on and on. And, 
and I, and they were all, they all were very different, but very physical or vocal or, and I, I think I related to that, right? I got really good at doing impressions and that was kind of my, my, my thing. And, um, you have to, uh, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do one. Oh my God. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. What, what can I do for you? Uh, have you ever seen the movie cars? Yes. Okay. Mater. You remember Mater? Okay. So, uh, let's see if I can try and do Mater for you. Hang on a minute. <laughs> And it's funny because Jake, my uh, my other Twitch brother, we actually did a video when I went to Dallas, and we did it, he did impressions too, and we did a video of that. Uh, hey there, my name Mater. You know, like Tub Mater Five to Tub. This is my best friend, Lightning McQueen. <laughs> awesome. <Thanks. laughs> that is the first time I've done that on a podcast. So there you go. <laughs> We're knocking it out of the park. I've never had anybody ask me to do an impression on a podcast. I love it. Um, Thank you. So there you go. So yeah, so, so that comedy aspect, right? And the other one was dancing. Mm. And again, psychologically thinking about it many, many years later, think about this, right? You're at an event or a club or whatever it is. There's people together and they're dancing, a party. Um, if you think about watching people on the dance floor, everybody's moving in ways they wouldn't. They're making facial expressions they usually don't. Noises they probably wouldn't make, right? They're, to them, they're acting all weird, right? To me, that's every day for me, right? So it was one of those things where I'm like, maybe I felt normal in a crowd of people that felt weird. Yeah. And, you know, but I always loved dancing. My mom always said to me, she was like, I'm going to teach you how to dance and all, and you're gonna, all the girls are going to love you for it. And, and she was right. You know, it was, it was something that I, it's always been a part of my life. And she and I would dance all the time. And um, in fact, when I was young, grade school, I came home bawling and I said to her, why does everybody keep making fun of me? And why does nobody like me? Because I didn't understand. Like this was, you know, in that thick of it all. And um, she said, I want, I'm, I want to show you something. And, and she took me to the bathroom. She had this big mirror and uh, we sat down and she, so she did every tick, tick and twitch that I was doing at the time. And, and then said, okay, I want you to let her rip, whatever you've got, just let it go. Cause I would, even though I wouldn't be aware of it, I'd catch the little things. Right. And I would try and suppress it. That's like a bomb waiting to go off. I mean, it just, you're just pushing it down and down and down. And, and so I exploded it out, so to speak. And, and after that, she put on some music and we'd start dancing uh, because that's my mom. And um, so, yeah. So music, comedy, dancing. And again, I find those to be common threads across um, people that have Tourette's. But again, I think it's a matter of that. It's that focus, right? Because each one has a different kind of focus or it, it takes your mind to a different place, you know? Um, so, yeah. Uh, the other thing too is, I mean, look, LinkedIn is a perfect example of, of what I described, right? Where Jake and I found one another. Um, I met a guy who was a broadcaster for years and is in the world of video and he has Tourette's, you know? Um, anybody that I've seen show up and say, somebody actually showed up in a video not long ago mentioning that um, his son has Tourette's. I said, I would love to get on a call with you, you know, because of what you asked, right? When, you, when there's an unknown, when you don't know what you don't know, well, I went through that for years. I crossed past Roger, a classmate in high school. I left so vividly remember it. I was coming up the stairs. He was coming down and lots of kids right in between sessions. And he was coming down the stairs. He did three ticks, one after the other that were different. And I immediately knew he had Tourette's. And I went home to my mom and I said, mom, I, I have a classmate that has Tourette's. I have no doubt in my mind, you know, what do I do? I want, I want to help. Like, how can we help? Cause I guarantee he and his family are sitting there the same way we were and going, what's wrong with my kid? How, how can we help? You know, for all the reasons, it's hard enough being a kid in general, right. Growing up, but to add that to the equation, you know, and, and anyway, long story short, we did wind up helping get them to UCLA where we got, I got diagnosed and you know, all of that. And it was a challenging process, but I mean, I think about that and I go, I was given a gift. I was given a gift of Tourette's so that I could see in that moment 
another human being that was going through the same thing I was, not knowing at all what was wrong with them, and to be able to to help, right? And I think it's the same kind of thing that I started to think about when I made that first video on LinkedIn was, and why I tell this story on so many podcasts and global radio shows and you know live shows and and keynotes and because I'm I realize that there may be someone who knows someone or someone who has Tourette's or whether they have Tourette's or not, right? We all go through different things in life. And, you know, knowing that you can, you can get through it, you know, and that you're not alone. And again, LinkedIn is a perfect example of that, you know, is that you're never alone. It feels like we're alone sometimes in our own worlds, but that's the beauty about this incredible community that was created, right? Where all these amazing people started to show up and and build one another up, right? Don't get me wrong. Every social platform has naysayers and negative Nellies and bullies and it doesn't matter where you are digitally and, or in person, but, but there's so much more good and there's so much more positive in the world and, uh, in, in all forms and fashion, I believe, than there is negative and bad. We just don't see and hear enough about it, right? So I, I drive as much of that as I can and we collectively do that and, and you feel it. Like you will go on to LinkedIn. There's so many of us that have gone and, you know, we're having a bad day and you'll get on LinkedIn. And you'll just feel better. That's awesome. It is awesome. It is awesome. And Brian, you're awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm just so inspired by this conversation. And um, really, I mean, we, we've talked about so many good things and I know this will not be our last conversation. <laughs> by all means, uh, I would love to share more of, of you and your story in, in time and due time. But um, do, you have, do you have some tips for the listeners if they want to get started on LinkedIn, you know, if they want to do some video you know, curation, give them some tips. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll give you five quick tips to becoming one of the world's top LinkedIn mini creator, video creators. Um, okay, tip number one, show up and be human. You'd think, yeah, why wouldn't I do that anyway? Trust me. Put the phone in front of your face and stare at yourself. <laughs> it's not as easy as it sounds, but you just got to start, right? So tip one, tip number one is show up and be human, okay? Tip number two, engage and support. Build community and shine your light bright on others. I said it earlier, LinkedIn is all about the people. So engage and support is tip number two. Tip number three, create. And there's many different ways to create. And I said this earlier, I'm going to say it again. You have a voice and a story that matters and a voice and a story that can positively affect, impact, and inspire another human being's life. Show up on video. Share your stories. It's all about relatability. Talk about what you're interested in. Talk about what gets you excited. Talk about what you're passionate about. Uh, and remember, it's about relatability. You don't have to talk about business. I'm a dad. I have an almost 20 and 18 year old. I am the loudest, proudest dad on LinkedIn. I scream from the rooftops about how proud I am all the time. And you sort of go, why would you be talking about your kids on LinkedIn? One main reason. There are millions of parents on LinkedIn. They can totally relate to that, right? They're sitting on the other side going, God, I'm, I'm proud for your kid too. I'm a, you know, I totally get that, you know? Um, so, and then remember this, 60 seconds or less is your best friend, especially when you're getting started. Everyone has 60 seconds. When you're scrolling through your feed because there is no video tab, when you're scrolling through your feed and you see a video, you want to capture their attention on one. But if they don't know who you are yet, right? If your video's a minute and a half, to two minutes plus, they're gonna keep scrolling, right? You wanna, you wanna capture attention. But again, the most important thing is remember that everyone is 60 seconds, okay? So tip three is create. Tip four, be consistent. Consistency is key in anything, right? Create a content strategy in a calendar to create a level of consistency that works for you. And I say works for you because I may be posting on LinkedIn in general four to six times a day, seven days a week. That doesn't mean that works for you. You want to find a 
a groove and a vibe that works for you. Because when you show up consistently, your tribe knows when you're going to show up. Okay. So tip four is be consistent. The last tip is collaborate. Incredible things happen when we come together. Get together with other creators and make videos. And like I've made almost 550 videos, okay, in the two plus years. Uh, I've made so many more of that if you keep all the outtakes from all the videos, especially when I was getting started. And I do keep a lot of those because, again, that adds that human. You know, a lot of times you just see the polished end result. You don't see what it took to get there. You don't see everything you went through to get there. I did actually write an article on LinkedIn, which you'll see if you go to my channel, my profile. It says, this is LinkedIn video. And I housed as many videos as I could in the early days. The article broke. It wasn't meant to house on those links. Um, but I used it to create a channel. And so that you could, and I tell the story from the beginning and take you through it. And you can watch all those early days videos because I want people to understand. Because they say all the time, wow, Brian, you're incredible on video. You should be on TV or something. And I'm like, Go and watch, he's like, how do you do that? I said, because I just started again and again and again. And I was so awkward and uncomfortable, had no idea what I was doing. And I just kept starting and, and falling and starting and falling. And, and then eventually started to get comfortable in my own skin and my own voice and my, found my vibe along the way. And, and it's okay to not know those things. When you're getting started, it's okay to not know any of that. Just, just start. Just start. So show up and be human is tip one. Engage and support is tip two. Create is tip three. Be consistent is tip four. And collaborate is tip five. And then just remember, people don't, Simon Sinek said this really well, people don't buy what you do, they buy, they buy why you do it. And then digitally, remember this, okay? Today, your logo is now your smile. Your business card that you would give somebody, well, that's now your personality. And how you leave other people feeling after that experience with you, that's your trademark now, okay? So you've, you've transformed that from, a, from, from hard to digital, so to speak. And then the other thing is just to remember this, right? And this was my Angelo. People may forget what you say, but they will never forget how you make them feel. And that is incredibly powerful. That is what video is it allows you to emote you can feel things that you you can only use caps and emojis so much right <laughs> video allows you to to feel all that stuff you're feeling and and, it, and as you said roger it's okay to be vulnerable um it's okay to wonder oh god what are people gonna say if i'm showing up and i'm crying on linkedin video like i have I have, it wasn't, it, it was, it was just, it just happened. It just, yeah, God, it just happened. It was right around Father's Day and I'm on a walk and I decided to just pull out my camera and was just talking about something and I morphed into talking about being a parent and, you know, in business life, it's hard. Sometimes we don't have decisions. Sometimes we can't be here for every sporting event and recital and what you have to be traveling and and it's hard on your heart because you, you want to be there for all that, but you need to, you want to take care of your family, you know? And, and I think I, I had a moment and I just said, you know, you can't turn the clock back. You make it a, a lot of times, more times than not, we make a choice to be a parent and don't miss the moments, you know? Don't, don't miss the moments. And more, most importantly, just love your kids. You know, every parent on the planet thinks they're screwing up their kids' lives and they're worried. We all go through it like, oh my gosh, am I, how, are they going to be able to stand on their two feet? Are they going to be able to live in this world and, and take care of themselves and, and be a good, kind human being and, and have a good heart and, and help others and Lord willing, take care of us when we can't don't remember who we are and, you know, um, but just love your kids, you know, and, and, and I had a moment when I, I, it was crazy and I just, I lost it. I, I yeah. <laughs> so again, relatability, relatability. You, you dropped so much gold today, as I like to call it. And again, thank you. If people want to reach you, Brian, if they want to reach out, if they want to book you as a speaker or just want to connect with you. <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. So LinkedIn is my home. Everybody always asks me, do I have a business card? I said, yeah, pull out your phone and we connect on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I, I, a couple of things I'd say, right? If you're, if you're a founder or a C-suite exec and you and your team want to find your voice and show up and you don't know how, Voice Your Vibe teaches you how to find your voice and voice your vibe and attract your tribe and how to tell a story that people will fall in love with on LinkedIn through video. Um, so if you want to, uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn, please let me know you heard me and you saw me on Roger's show. Send me a personalized message so I don't miss it because most people don't send personalized messages and I have to try and figure out, you know, what, what did you want to connect about, right? So please do that. Uh, and I do have two free giveaways for your audience, Roger. So one of those is if you have questions about how to LinkedIn video, you know, you want to talk strategy uh, for you and or your business, you can schedule a free 15 minute consultation with me. Roger will have this in the show notes, but calendly.com slash voice your vibe. And then the other giveaway I have for you guys is a free LinkedIn jumpstart course. So I do have a masterclass, also have a free LinkedIn jumpstart course. It is 15 free lessons packed with golden nuggets to get you newbies to LinkedIn started. Even if you've been around, you've had a, a profile, but you haven't done anything. It's great. It is actually a peel off of our master paid master class. Um, there's so much great gold in there and, and it's why we created it because we wanted, I want everyone on LinkedIn to understand the true power of this incredible playground, right? The kindergarten scenario I shared and, and the power of finding your voice and showing up and, and supporting and engaging and knowing that look, anyone and everyone you ever want to do business with, they're here and they're here knowing that all you have to understand how to do is to show up and be human and relatable, right? And, and how to create that content and how to create consistency, all the stuff we talked about earlier, right? Which I'm here to help you with. So those are the two free giveaways. Um, for the Jumpstart course, it's linkedinmasterclass.thinkific.com forward slash jumpstart, if I recall right. Again, we'll have it in the show notes. But um, please take advantage of that stuff, guys. Here to help. I've been doing this for a really long time. As Roger shared, it's changed my life so many times. And it's because of the people. And like I said, I, I found a voice I never knew I had. And I want to help you find your voice because it truly will change your life too. Awesome. Brian, thank you so much for the free gifts. We appreciate that. Welcome to the American Real family. And I cannot wait to see where you're going in the future. And I know we're going to do some collaborations as well. So thank you so much. Roger, I'm so humbled and honored. Thank you so much for having me on your show as a guest. It truly has been a wonderful conversation and absolutely look forward to collaborating together. And again, just thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for tuning into American Real. Be sure to visit our website, AmericanReal.tv, or search for us on iTunes or YouTube for past episodes. While you're there, please rate us or leave us a review as that helps others find our show. I am truly grateful and appreciate all of your support. If you'd like to be part of our inner circle or want one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out the American Real Learning Academy where we have self-help groups and courses so you can build the best you. We also have a new Facebook group where you can connect with high achievers from around the world. If you want to go even further, maybe you're determined to write your own book or launch your own podcast, contact me today to see if we can help. You can reach me through Instagram or Facebook or email me directly at roger at americanreal.tv. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.